Live the Goals podcast, episode number 206. Live the Goals podcast, your place for motivation, life lessons, and laughter. Don't settle for wandering through a mundane life. Instead, let us help you reach your goals and live a fulfilling life doing what you love. Our guests know what it's like to live with purpose and laugh along the way. Warning, if you're a stick in the mud, you definitely need to stick around. Loosen up your ties, kick off your high heels, and let's get to it with your host, Dale Richardson. Welcome back to Live the Goals Podcast, friends and family. I'm your host, Dale Richardson, and I'm really excited about today's episode. Got a bunch of great, fantastic, exciting things going on today. First and foremost, this is an interview episode. That's right. We are back to doing the interviews. We took a break from doing interviews so that we can do the collaboration on the ABCs of Leadership, which I did with Patrick and Connolly, our interview guest today. And we took a little bit of a break to get ready for this big announcement that is coming today. Now, I've teased it for quite a while And today, I'm finally going to tell you what the big announcement is. So, friends and family, here's the exciting news. So excited to announce that there is now a Live the Goals app. That's right. You can download the Live the Goals app on Google Play. Just go to Google Play if you've got an Android phone and type in the search bar, Live the Goals, all one word. Or you can search my name, Dale Richardson and the Live the Goals app will come up. It's got some great features in there. You can search, you can sort the episodes, you can mark episodes as favorites. You can do this all in the app. It's also got links to connect directly with me. If you got a question about an episode, you can click a link and email me directly through the app. Wonderful, wonderful app that I am so excited that we finally have for you. I want it to find ways to make it easier for you to access, consume, and interact with Live the Goals podcast. And I think that you'll really, really love this app. So instead of having to go into whatever your podcast player is, instead of having to go online and go to the website to to look for the next episode, you can go directly to the app. And here's the thing. Only people who download the app will get the special bonus episodes that I'll be putting out from now on. So All of the app users, you'll have special bonus episodes within the app that I will release periodically, and you will not be able to get them anywhere else. So, friends and family, go download the app. Go do it now. Listen to this episode there. You can stop listening to it on whatever you're listening to. Go download the app. I would love for each and every one of you to download the Live the Goals app. Again, just go to Google Play. Type in Live the Goals, all one word in the search bar, or Dale Richardson, and you should see the app pop right on up. Add it to your phone, and it's just an easy, convenient way to always have the motivating, inspiring words of the day and the really great interviews with thought leaders, people that are on their way to success, and people that have already achieved phenomenal success. And as you know, the interviews are starting back up, so After you download the app and get back into this episode, you'll get to hear from my friend, Patrick and Connolly. So excited for this interview. I won't talk too much about the interview. Let's just go ahead and jump into the interview. So, friends and family, back to the interview episodes. And the first one is with the great friend, ABCs of Leadership Collaborator, Patrick and Connolly. Okay, friends and family, let's get started. I'm thrilled to introduce my guest today. My guest is Patrick N. Connolly, and Patrick is a consultant, technologist, speaker, and problem solver. He brings people together and solves problems by figuring out abstract, complex challenges and making them simple. Patrick and I have been friends and leadership advisors for well over a decade, well, well over a decade. And you know Patrick as our collaborator on the ABCs of Leadership series that we did together that just ended a few weeks ago. Patrick, are you ready to help us set and reach goals that matter? Good morning, and I absolutely am, Bill. Good to be talking to you this morning. Man, I'm excited about this. Uh, I, I've given them the, you know, a little bit of the formal introduction of who you are. I've known you for ages, so I'm not going to tell them all the other stuff I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
um no patrick is an awesome person i'd love for you patrick to share just just expand on that a little bit more so they get a better sense of who you are man yeah i appreciate it man and it's it's great to be working with you on all the other things we've collaborated on and to be working with you and talking to you and your listeners this morning um really i enjoy solving problems and if you think about what life is it's a series of problems and things that happen to you that you have to figure out how to get over how to get through it how to get around it and how not to let that challenge kind of impact you and drag you down long term. And I think everyone that's listening has been through something, uh, whether it's personal or professional, that you needed some help getting over and through, or you've done it by yourself and you've got a great story or a testimony to share with someone else. And that's mm. what really excites me uh, on the technology side, on the leadership side, um, and just as people, right? I think we often in this complex world now, we, we get lost in the, the technology and the social media of it, but really... Mm-hmm. It comes down to the connectivity that you have with one another. And that's what I want to stress is that's what I'm really trying to get back to for myself personally um, mm-hmm. and to be able to help people. So um, super excited to talk to you and ready to take this conversation wherever we can go with it. Yeah. And and friends and family, like I said, Patrick and I ha- have known each other. We've worked t- together on projects. We are both advisors um, for student leaders and, and friends as well. So so. What I can say is, is, you know, we're going to get into a few subjects here, but Patrick has so much knowledge. We are, we, we, we both, uh, count ourselves as, as people who train others in leadership. And, and I got to tell you, when, when I watch Patrick train or even when I see him interact with people and he just talked about connections with people, um, I'm always picking up lessons from him. Even the way I give my presentations now have, have shifted and changed based off of watching some of the presentations that Patrick has given. So, so, so I really want to make sure you're, you're tuned into this episode and, and getting from it all the lessons and the knowledge I know Patrick is going to drop. Patrick, I always start my episodes with a funny story. Um, I, I ask our guests to tell us something that made you laugh recently. It doesn't have to be the biggest, gigantic, most gigantic thing in the world, but, I, but I'd like to hear something that made you kind of just chuckle recently because I want people to remember that um, you know, even with the ups and downs of life, we got to remember to make time to laugh. You know, it's funny. Um, I, I have a, been blessed with a wonderful son. Um, and he and I were spending time together this weekend and we're just kind of out. And he's at that age where his mind is starting to blossom and his body is growing. Um, so he's mm-hmm. getting bigger, he's getting taller. Um, and he's starting to think a lot differently. And that includes girls. And so we're out <laughs> and we're eating uh, at this hamburger place and these two young girls come in. And the funniest thing for me as a father was watching him try to look, but not try to notice or, or to kind of let me know that he was watching them. <laughs> and so I called him out on it. And of course, he goes into the whole awkward kid phase where he doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, but it was just funny to see the energy in his face and the enthusiasm. Uh, as he <laughs> laughed and smiled. Uh, and, and that kid, Jack joke kind of carried through the weekend. But that was kind of gave me a huge smile and it continues to give me a huge smile just to know that he's <laughs> growing up and maturing and to kind of watch his body and his mind blossom and i think that's a joy and something special for any parent yeah but 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 still still a kid still your kid and doesn't want dad to know that he's trying to look at the cute girls huh absolutely absolutely not. <laughs> oh that's funny man and he's a great kid I, I i hung out with uh you and him at the last conference we were at together a few months that's ago right. or last month and so um he is getting tall <laughs> he's getting man he's about he might be getting close to past me if he, if he's not already um <laughs> He's probably got to pass me too, and that's a scary thought for both of us. <laughs> well, well, Patrick, you know that I believe if you don't need a team to help you reach your goals, then your goals aren't big enough, right? And that's part of the reason that we decided to work together on the ABCs of Leadership Project. Um, I, you know, the more you work with people, the better you get at it, and the more ideas you have, and the more energy you get from collaborating with people. So I'd, I'd love to ask you because, you, you know, Everything you just spoke on, and, and as we, if you go to his website, patricknconnolly.com, um, you'll see that he talks about working with people. And so, Patrick, what are some things that people should think about when they're looking for someone to collaborate with on a project? I, I think the first thing is you really have to know what your interests are, right? I think as people, mm-hmm. that's one thing that I can honestly tell everyone I spent a lot of time trying to figure out or, or wasted a lot of time not being in tune with was knowing what my true interest and focus areas were. You know, mm-hmm. I think we all have God's talents and gifts that he's given to us and we can spend a lot of energy doing things, but how many of those things are we passionate about? How many of those things actually drive us and excite us? And so I think that's the first thing you've got to do is to figure out kind of 
what your true interest lies, uh, where that interest lies, and then figure out does that person kind of have a similar interest or an interest that complements yours, um, mm. and, and figuring that out. I think the second thing is maybe there's something that you need to be challenged on, right? So maybe you're trying to grow yourself in a specific area or aspect, and maybe you're weak or in a certain area and someone else is stronger, and maybe you need to work with that person to kind of pick up some of those traits or pick up some values or some lessons mm. on how to be better to kind of stretch yourself and to grow. Uh, and I think the third thing is the ability to, to work together and to collaborate. And that means not just to, you know, work together when things are great, but to say, hey, look, we're having a tough time getting through this or figuring this out. And we've got to sit down and problem solve and figure out how to get through it. And to be able to do that and maintain uh, a healthy relationship uh, is going to be key because conflict is healthy. And a lot of us struggle with that. I sometimes struggle with that. But yeah. figuring out kind of how to balance that out um, with a person to collaborate and drive it together is, is going to be key. Uh, and I think I think the last thing I would say is probably what's the right working style? You know, for certain people, it's, hey, I need to be together in person, working with you all the time. Certain people are better virtual collaborators. Certain people are morning people. Certain people are night people. Certain people are great planners. Certain people are more ad hoc. you got to figure out kind of what's going to work for you and make sure that you're comfortable with your style and with that right. person's style. Because if you're not, those, those issues can kind of be fertile ground for distraction uh, instead of productivity. Yeah, and and two things you mentioned. One, um, distraction. When you talk about, you know, started talking about people knowing what matters to them, and you know, I've I've mentioned before, and and I got this from John Maxwell that, you know, if you don't know, if you're not clear about what matters to you, you you won't be able to tell the difference between an opportunity and a distraction, and. And so I love that you started there. Before you collaborate with anybody else, make sure you know what it is that you really want to do. And 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 then you talked about conflict being healthy. You know, it 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 immediately made me think back to to college. I was in an organization with a with a buddy of mine. We were both leaders in the organization. And and as far as hanging out, we were we were the best of buddies, but we had completely different styles of leadership and different opinions of, of, of leadership and, and what we thought was best. And, you know, what was great there is that because we had that outside friendship, um, we were able to work through those conflicts and, and resolve, you know, resolve whatever those issues were. And they, and they, they were often, <laughs> they were plenty and often, but, but we knew that we liked each other. And so it didn't interfere with that friendship. And although we, you know, we, some, a lot of times we didn't change each other's minds, but the times that we both came around and agreed on something, those projects were absolutely awesome. It, it was one of those things where, you know, we, we may not agree on 99 things, but if we ever agree on something, we know that we've hit something. And and so that was an example for me early on that conflict can be a very positive thing. So I'm glad you mentioned that in there as well. It, it, it certainly is, man. I think it's really about figuring out, you know, leadership is all about figuring out how you can bring the best out of each other. And sometimes that means you've got to get through a rough patch to see the other person's point of view, to see their passion for an idea that maybe you just don't truly really understand. And for maybe mm-hmm. sometimes for you to acquiesce or sometimes for them to acquiesce or you guys to say, look, we're not going to do this right now, whatever it's going to be. But figuring out how when you work with somebody to bring the best out of them, and sometimes it takes a little bit of conflict to do that. Yeah. And, and so, so let's talk about our project a little bit. Um, ours went, I think, from my end, relatively smoothly. Um, I, I enjoyed working with you and, and we both, it, it was, it was almost one of those working independently, but working together, um, type of things. I, I'd love to know from you, what, what type of, um, what type of feedback did you get from our project? You know, it was really great working with you on that. And I appreciate all the support that you gave me and kind of doing, doing it, kind of sharing you know, the details about the project. Uh, for me, I learned a lot personally researching each of the different ABC topics and kind of figuring out the research and kind of what point of view I wanted to share. Uh, but what was also valuable was number one, that people actually read this stuff and listen to the podcast, right? That was a yeah. concern for me. Uh, but people were engaged. What I felt and what I got feedback on was that people thought that it was a simple, quick concept that they could quickly apply, supplemented with kind of some, some data points or some research on it. Um, and that it was really helpful. And I think more than mm-hmm. anything, what it showed me was that people are hungry for this type of content because it's not out there enough, or maybe it's in a, a format that people don't think are consumable. But people reached out to me on several occasions, commenting on the blog posts and reaching out to me via other mechanisms saying, Hey, you know, what are you reading? What are you studying? 
you know, this is the type of leadership questions or concerns that I'm having. What do you think? You know, how do you get this information? How do you pull this together? So it showed me that there was a real sincere interest in leadership. And I think that despite the huge body of work on leadership that's out there, um, there's always more to be done in research because leadership is really about people and people are dynamic. We're always changing. The issues that mm. in our societies and our communities are changing. So leadership styles, leadership research and trends are going to change. And it's important to be in tune with that. So it, the biggest thing for me is it lets me know that there's a, there's a need for, for the kind of leadership and information that we were sharing. And there's more where that came from. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out is how can I step up and share more of the content that's relevant, not only to my life, but that might be relevant to other people's lives as well. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I loved reading your, um, your blog post. So, so friends and family, you know, we, we did have our list of words that we were going to do. Um, Patrick actually put together, um, a, a brief little, um, snapshot or phrase about what, you know, what direction we'd probably go with each word. But that was it. From there, we kind of went our own, own direction. And so it was awesome reading, you know, the, the direction you went with, with your blog. And I think, you know, with your blog, you included a lot of, a lot more information in there about different books you may have pulled information from, you know, other thought leaders. And, and that was really, really cool for me to see where you took that and, and to learn as well. I love, you know, we both love leadership and learning about leadership. And then, you know, the feel of my podcast word of the days, um, aren't as, I'll say detailed as, as your blogs may have been. And so it, it was interesting and challenging sometimes, um, having to, to come up with the, the descriptions for those words of the day. So, so that was really, really fun for me and challenging to have to think of, um, a word of the day description for those specific words that we agreed on rather than just whatever I wanted to on that day, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think what was impressive for me is that you, know, you, you took the topic and made a conversation out of it. Right. You know, mm-hmm. While I could, uh, I put a little phrase together and did some research and kind of a quick point of view. You made a conversation and a dialogue piece out of it, right? Which again, stretching that engagement and making it really valuable to people, conversation right. is a great way uh, to do that. So I was appreciative of the fact that you did that for 26 days straight, where <laughs> I felt like it was easy for me to do some research and to do writing, but to make a conversation, I felt like you took it to the next level. Hmm. Well, well, I, 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 right as we got to the end and we'll move on to the next topic, but, but I did joke a little bit in, in one of the last, uh, podcasts that you picked the word zester G and I had, <laughs> I, I, I looked at it. I was like, I don't even know how to pronounce this. <laughs> what is this word? And so that, that was cool. Um, just, just, you know, sometimes as you're learning, we forget, right? We forget because we're out of school now. We forget that, you know, there are all these new words you can learn. And I know people sign up for like the word of the day on dictionary.com and stuff like that. So that was, that was also just a random, another, another cool thing that happened in there that it was just a reminder that we're still learning. Um, regardless of how much we think we know, we're still learning <laughs> all day, every day. All right. Yeah. And, and so Patrick, let's, let's transition to leadership because we've both been advising, mentoring and coaching student leaders, you know, together for well over a decade now. And so I know leadership is a gigantic topic. I know that, you know, you coach and train leaders at every level, professional as well as students. But since we both work together with student leaders, I'd love to ask you just what are some lessons you can share with others out there who who currently are or who want to work with student leaders? I think the first thing is to remember that, you know, our students and our young people have so much potential and talent. And, you know, their challenges that they're dealing with and the world that they're inheriting and living in are much more complex and different than maybe when we grew up. And so we have to be sensitive to that. Um, That doesn't mean we have to cut them a break in terms of pushing them to be better and making them realize their potential and challenging their ways of thinking. But I do think that sometimes we need to be a little bit more sensitive to the fact that the world and the expectations are different. And we've got to, if we're going to be good leaders and to really challenge them and help them, we've got to take a step back and figure out how we can look at the situation, the dynamics, and figure out kind of where they're coming from and identify mm-hmm. the best way to reach them. Um, because I think sometimes one of the challenges that I've seen is people think that, you know, this is the way I was taught and coached, so I'm going to teach and coach you the same way. And I right. think that's probably maybe not the best way to go about it in all situations. So recognizing that, you know, that, that dynamic is, is one. Um, I think the second thing is that there's so much opportunity for them 
and that they want to be impactful. Right? This generation of millennials are much more socially responsible and focused on corporate social responsibility than ever before. I think they mm. want to have good lives, but I think more than anything, they want to have a great experience. They want to be part of their communities and they want to collaborate and they want transparency. And I think those are all things that systematically over you know, the last couple of years haven't taken shape as much. And I think mm-hmm. that's where their passion really lies. So if you can use those things, those concepts as ways to kind of reach them, um, you know, it's going to open up doors. Uh, and I think the second thing is we've got to think about how we communicate with it. And I think for me, that's a lot more texting, a lot more social media and leveraging avenues that they're feeling comfortable with, um, which were things that I wasn't as big on personally. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, you know, those are some of the kind of things that I think are really helpful to get them comfortable with accepting and hearing you. Because I think that's probably the biggest challenge is that if, if they don't feel like they can hear you or if you're not talking to them in a language that, that, that they understand, you're, 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 you're not going to be as effective as you want to be. So building that common ground, that foundation level where there's open and fluid communication, I think is key and recognizing their potential, realizing that they want to be impactful and that there are several ways to collaborate and having good communication flow are, are all things and good ways to get engaged with this next generation. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's, there's all types of articles and research and talk about millennials and, and how they are and how they think. But, you know, when, when you mix in, what you just said about how impactful they want to be and, and how sometimes we want to train others the way we were trained or, or have them go through whatever it was that we went through that we think shaped us. Um, you know, what I believe when it comes to communication and, and this is hard to, to keep in mind and live by on a, on a everyday, everywhere basis is that in, in communication, you know, I believe that if if someone isn't understanding, uh, it's because I'm not communicating effectively, right? What, what what we like to do is say, "Well, you're not you you don't understand what I'm saying." Well, if if I'm a leader and I'm trying to communicate, it's it's incumbent upon me to maybe communicate differently to get this message through to them. And so, you know, as we're training student leaders, it's important for us to remember that. And you talked about getting more involved in social media and texting and and doing things that you may not have been comfortable with or, or have been or, or were doing at that time because you're trying to communicate in a way that is effective that gets through to them. And so th- that's cool. You did that. But, you know, you know, I'm talking about even if you're talking to your friends, right? Not <laughs> even outside of the leadership basis. It's, it's, it's hard sometimes for us to take responsibility for that miscommunication and say, what can I do to try to get this message through to this person rather than blame them for not understanding or not learning or not accepting what I'm saying. You know, I, I, I can't agree with you more. I, I had the fortunate experience as an undergrad to study leadership formerly as my minor. And one thing I vividly remember taking away from that is that leadership, leadership is really an exercise in communication. And mm. It's a process of dialoguing and sending messages and receiving messages and tuning messages so that people get it and so that people understand kind of what needs to get done, how you're going to support them, and where efforts need to be refocused. And I never lose sight of that. You know, that, you know if, if you're having great leadership um, or talking about leadership, it's really how are you communicating with people and what are the needs uh, that need to be met and fulfilled and does everybody understand that and does everybody get on the same page? And I think that's oftentimes the biggest challenge is, you know, getting to that place where you can communicate effectively and, and, and with transparency and that everybody's sending and receiving messages that are actionable um, digestible and understandable, um, and that comes through clear. Yeah, and and so, you know, we've talked. We, we were just kind of talking to the people that are trying to reach student leaders and train student leaders. What are some words of advice you have for any student leaders out there that might be listening? You know, I think I would say, you know, don't give up on us, right? You know, our our generation, uh, that are, <laughs> your senior. You know, we're we're adapting and struggling to the challenges of, of the new world, just like you are. And so there's a lot of things that are changing. So don't give up on us so easily. We want to be there. We want to support you. Um, and, and it's a two way street. You know, if, if you can help us understand how we can better reach you or what your real passions or issues or challenges or concerns are, that helps us to focus our energy. Um, two, I think I would say to them, you know, don't be afraid to be aggressive. You know, sometimes you have to be uh, willing to step up and, and kind of drive conversations and be a little bit more um, extroverted if that's not your thing mm. to be actionable and, and to make things action oriented. Um, and I think the third thing is sometimes patience. Um, I think one thing that our, our generation um, and the millennial generation are getting accustomed to is this instant gratification. Everything's got to happen 
so quickly, so expeditiously. Mm-hmm. And I think the reality of the situation is sometimes the type of change and growth that we want to see take a little time. Right? You mm-hmm. can't boil the ocean, um, but you can start small and, and build pilots and other things that are kind of get you there. So, you know, exercising patience and learning to sometimes be comfortable with the small progress that's going to hopefully grow um, over time uh, are all things that all good lessons that anybody at any level at any age group, um, you know, should be able to get comfortable with and that are going to be beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> be patient with this. <laughs> that, that's a good place to start, right? Um, we're, we're learning and trying to adapt as well. And, and we, although we want to help, sometimes we don't help the best way because we don't have the tools yet. Right. And, and, and the problem is that at times we may, we may think we know more because we're older and we've experienced a little bit more. Um, but in those, in certain areas, um, you know more. And so in those areas, you, you'd have to be, you, you know, you got to be patient with us as well. So I, I love that advice to the student leaders. And, um, you know, it, for some reason, it, it reminded me also when, when, when I started out at the first, um, law firm I was at after law school, um, I had a partner that, that came to me or, or he didn't come to me. We we're, we're sitting in his office and we we're talking and, and, and he said that, um, he didn't think he could make it and become a partner if he had to start then when I was starting. And, and, and part of the, one of the things he pointed out was just a change in technology, right? I mean, he, he, he kind of joked and laughed about the fact that, you know, now, you know, your client emails you and, and expects a response back soon, <laughs> right? Versus, um, versus what he said when he was coming up, um, he, he could say, you know, I put the letter in the mail today and then he'd had all day to work on it, <laughs> right? If he needed to. And, 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 and because it was going to take a few days for the mail to get there, um, people just weren't as impatient waiting for whatever it was that he was, he was doing. And, and so he did, he, he understood that he didn't feel that same pressure. And, 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 and then the same of me understanding where he's coming from. If, if, if I'm, you know, expecting those quick responses back from him by email, understanding and giving him a little leeway because he's not used to that yet. And, and so we're both learning and growing from both ends. So, so Patrick, thank you for sharing, um, both the leaders, student leaders, as well as people trying to work with student leaders, sharing some advice for both of those groups. I want to transition into something that I do on each of my podcasts. It's talking about failure, right? I, I, I truly do believe that a lot of our biggest successes come after or on the heels of, of something that most of us would consider a monumental failure. And, and and if you don't really take the time to look back at what used to be a failure and 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 understand that that was really a crucial and important part of the journey to get you to the successes you're at today, you'll you'll miss the lessons that that you could learn that will um leapfrog you and and help you grow exponentially in the future. And so Patrick, I'd love for you to to share with us something that at that time you thought was, you know, a big failure, but now looking back, you realize it's something you needed to grow or something that helped put you on the path towards success. Yeah. Uh, first of all, man, so many failures. And, uh, you know, I like many people don't like failure. Uh, it's hard to admit that you failed. It's hard to share mm. that publicly. Uh, but I think, you know, one thing that I tell my son um, is, you know, you will have a much better life if you don't make the same mistake that I did. Mm. Don't waste your time and your energy making the same mistake that I made or that your grandfather made or that other people have made. You know, save yourself the heartache and the trouble of that experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, you know, if I think about, you know, failure and kind of where I failed and kind of where it's been a problem for me, I would certainly say that professionally, I, I certainly expected uh, after working you know, for some of the big four professional services firms, that I would be a partner by now. And mm. that, that hasn't happened, right? But I think that's come at, at the expense of, you know, being on the right projects at the right time, maybe not working as hard in certain points in my life, maybe not making the right connections, and recognizing that, hey, you know, I've got to be intentional about the things that I want to do and the roadmap that I need to build to get there. And that's one thing I want to stress to everybody is, you know, Failure is going to happen to all of us, uh, but the biggest failure that you can have is not having a plan that you can kind of jump back into and kind of know, where do I need to pick up and go from here? And that wow. was probably the biggest lesson in failure that I've, I've had is not living intentionally. Um, and, and despite that, God has been good to me and that I've been put in great positions and 
uh, great opportunities and great people. Uh, but I didn't have a plan that said, this is where I want to go. And here are the steps that I'm going to take to push myself further towards it. Um, and so I spent a lot of time, a lot of energy on things that may not have been as beneficial to my life and my career or my personal development as they could have been. Um, and time is a resource that you don't get back. So once you spend it, it's gone. And so that's mm. the one big failure that I would say is not being as intentional or as diligent in my planning about what I want, how it's going to, how I'm going to get there, um, mm-hmm. as I could be. And I would say to anybody, put a plan together. It doesn't mean that your plan can't change or that it shouldn't change, but at least you have a semblance of where you're going to, where you want to go, who you need to connect with, the resources you need to be working on or leveraging. Um, otherwise, you're, you're at, the, at, the, at the mercy of the wind, um, and, and that's not a good place to be. Yeah, so do you have a plan, and are you intentional about taking the steps in that plan? And, you know, Patrick, I have a, a mentor that, um, you know, talks about being both sincere and strategic. And that may not sound like much, but that was actually a, a, a pretty big breakthrough for me because I think there are a lot of us out here who feel like, you know, I'm trying to be sincere. I'm compassionate about these things. Um, and, and, and for some reason, <laughs> you don't connect that to being strategic. You feel like being strategic is, is, you know, you maybe in your mind you connected being conniving or something or manipulating or or something like that. But but guess what? You can be sincere and strategic. And I'd argue now that you you need to be strategic, right? If, if we need people with these big beautiful goals and, and to to come to fruition, and if you're not strategic about it, like you said, you you may just be blowing with the wind and you'll never get there. And and so. So it's okay to be strategic about those things you're sincere about and, and making the right connections, taking the right steps, analyzing what the next best step is, and then being intentional about taking those actions. You're so right. And I think I mentioned it earlier in the podcast. You know, if you don't know what you want, or even more importantly, I tell people, if you don't know what you do not want, mm. What are you filtering and how are you determining what's a priority in your life? What will you suspend your focus and your energy on things? So knowing those two things and kind of laying out that plan, those steps and those people and those activities um, are, are all critical. They're all critical. Yeah. Well, and pa- well, Patrick, we are winding down now. We're, we're, we're on the tail end of the podcast. And so before we wrap up, there's something I do on every podcast called the hot seat scenario. So you're going to sit in the hot seat for a second here. Um, so here, here's what it is. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you a scenario and you're going to have to make a decision. So you're being forced to swap lives with one of these two people. You got to choose either person A or person B. Now, person A is somebody who works 40 to 50 hours a week, is living check to check and spends an average of two to three hours a night kind of you know, watching TV, Netflix, surfing on the internet, just just a little something mindless to wind down. And then there's person B. Person B makes um, several hundred thousand dollars per year, um, but works crazy, crazy long hours and has almost no free time. Person B basically, you know, goes to work, comes home, goes to sleep, does it over again. Now, neither one of these people are, are pursuing their passions and, and and they both know that, but they want to change that. So if you're going to jump into one of these lives, which one will you jump into? And and what's a couple quick steps that you'll take to turn this ship around and get these people pointed in the direction of their passion? Man, that's a tough call, man. Um, but I'm going to be honest and say, you know, the person with more time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's because time is a resource that, again, like I said, it's the one resource that God's not making any more of. Right? Everyone, mm. no matter who you are, or where you live, has 24 hours in a day. And you get to choose how you spend it. So that person that is getting up and working for 40 or 50 hours and coming home and having that excess time they're spending watching Netflix or endlessly surfing the net or whatever that they're doing, those are extra hours that they could be using to kind of plan out their lives. And it doesn't mean you have to sacrifice all of your free time, but if you start small and say, for every day of the week, I'm going to spend one hour working on me, my plan for my life, my next steps, you know, how do I build my brand, you know, figuring out what I want to do. Uh, with my life, my career, who do I need to help to get me there and kind of networking and career conversations with people, that intentional living, that's, I think, a much more valuable thing than mm. having 
the excess funds, which at a certain level, money can provide you avenues. But with our society and kind of the advent of open source and all the tools and information and resources that are now available, um, largely free on the Internet, having more time to explore them and to properly leverage them, I think, is, is going to be more valuable for me. Um, and also making sure that I balance my life, you know, mm. having time for friends and family. Um, you know, I have a, a good friend that he and I did do a lot of things together. And we, we kind of try to live by the expression, life experiences, not life possessions. You know, mm. at the end of the day, you know, we can't take any of this with us. And having the good memories to live off of and making good memories um, to share for others, you know, is way more important than the money or the jewelry or the clothes or whatever the material possession could be. So time. Yeah, I love that. That needs to go on a wall <laughs> in an apartment or a house. Life experiences, not life possessions. Wow. I love that. And, and, and I love, I love giving this scenario because I, I get completely different answers from different people. And that's great. And that, that's just a reminder that there are different ways to get to where you're trying to go. And, you know, you, you talked about time and maybe sacrificing some of that time, um, that for a little bit of free time to, to head towards your passion and, you know, it just made me thought, think of the question I just asked last week to the mastermind group I'm, I'm, I'm doing. And, and that question was, what are you willing to sacrifice to get to your goal, right? To, to get to, to fulfill your purpose. What is it that you're willing to sacrifice? And, and those answers were all over the part too. And for some people, it was sacrificing that, that hour a day, um, that they're going to take away from, from some of their downtime to get towards that goal. So thank you for playing along, Patrick, on the hot seat scenario and, um, and now we're wrapping up, man. So, so I, I just need two more things from you. What, what I'd love for you to do, um, first is I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to make sure that our friends and family can reach you. So, so, so if, if you've got a website you want them to go to or any social media, I'd love for you to share that with you, with, with the friends and family listening so they can reach out to you. And, and then after that, um, I'd love for you to close this out with just a motivational quote or a mantra or something you use that helps you get through um, your day or maybe helps you start your day or, or whatever it is that you use to give you that little extra umph. So Patrick, um, leave us with your contact information and the motivational quote or mantra. Uh, thank you, Dale. It's been an honor spending time with you and your listeners today and working with you and look forward to continue to work with you uh, over the course of time. Uh, folks, uh, if you can reach me via my website, www.patricknconnelly dot com and that's spelled C O N N A L L Y Patrick N Connolly dot com. I'm also on Twitter at Patrick Connolly or on uh, Instagram at Patrick N Connolly. Happy to connect with anybody and talk about any range of topics uh, that folks think are important to share, or collaborate on projects and ideas. Um, I'm really about making connections and, and supporting the growth of our communities as a whole, I mean, the leadership space, uh, the technology space. So I look very forward to talking to people and getting connected. Um, as I think about what motivates me or what is good for me. I did an exercise a little while ago that was around 21 days of positive thinking. And it mm. was making sure that you worked out every day to get your physical body going, that you spent time in prayer or meditation um, for 10 minutes a day, and then um, kind of writing down three things that you were thankful for every day. And it's a way to change your mentality and your mindset um, when there's so much negativity and there's so many obstacles that can come at you, it's hard to stay positive. But if you work your physical body, um, that's a good way to get jump started and get positive energy going from there. If you spend time in that prayer meditation, it's a good way to focus your spirit. Um, and then if you write down those three positive things, it's a way to refocus those neural patterns in your mind to kind of get away from that negativity and to focus on the positive. And when you think about that and put that all together, you're aligning your spirit, your mind, and your body. And if mm. you do that every day, um, or fairly consistently, I'm very convinced that you'll be taking and putting forth the best you possible. And that doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen, things aren't going to kind of come to your path, but you'll be better equipped, hopefully, to deal with and to manage through those things and to help yourself and help others as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. This has been fun. Um, I, I, I love doing the podcast, but I love even more than that, um, being able to do it with good friends. And, and so this, this was fun for me. I, I enjoyed it. I've been looking forward to doing this. We, we, we knew it was coming for a while and just had to kind of schedule in a date. So 
Patrick, thank you for, for being so generous with your time and, 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 and your information and, and letting us learn and laugh with you. Look forward to, to working with you, continuing to work with you. We, 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 we still got quite a bit to work on with some of the organizations we're in together. And so friends and family, you, you already know that you can find links to his website as well as other information that we discussed here on the show on the show notes page. So just go to live the goals.com and you can enter Patrick in the search bar and his show notes will pop right on up. So until next time, friends and family, remember to set goals that matter and live the goals you set. Friends and family, are you ready to make your goals a reality? Do you want to learn with like-minded people who are ready to take action and improve their situations just like you? Well, I've learned that no one accomplishes their goals alone. See, the better your team, the better those around you, the more likely you'll reach your goals and reach them faster. And the secret to a great team is a great leader. Well, friends and family, this is your chance to sign up for my next free mastermind class on the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. You'll learn how to be a better leader at home, at work, and in anything you do. Just go to livethegoals.com forward slash free class for more information and to register for free. Well, that's all for today, friends and family. So until next time, remember to set and reach goals that matter. Thanks for checking out the show today and make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. We hope you take away something that helps fill your life with purpose and laughter and make sure you head over to livethegoals.com for more info on guests and resources. Remember to set and reach goals that lead you to a life of purpose and passion.